안녕하세요 미국 주식으로 온 대학이 미주은입니다 최근 들어서 미국 주식 시장의 추세가 참 좋습니다 요즘 같아서는요 주식 투자로 돈 금방 불려서 짧은 시간 내에 미국 주식으로 정말 은퇴하는 날이 금세 찾아올 것 같은 생각이 듭니다 하지만 주식 시장에서 최고의 악재는 주가 상승이라는 말이 있습니다 그만큼 주가가 이렇게 계속 올라가다 보면요 그 주식을 팔아서 차익 실현을 하고 싶은 투자자들이 많이 생기게 될 테고요. 그러면 또 주식시장은 한 차례 조정이 찾아오게 되겠죠. 아무튼 중요한 것은요. 항상 멀리 바라보면서 하루하루 주가 차트의 움직임에 흔들리지 않는 것이라고 생각을 합니다. 이렇게 하루하루 변동하는 주식 차트에 얽매이지 않고요. 장기적인 안목으로 투자를 진행해서 대박이 난 행운의 사나이가 있습니다. 바로 테슬라 주식에 투자해서 130억을 만들어내고요. 지난주 아마존이라는 꿈의 직장을 버리고 자유를 찾은 제이슨 드볼트인데요. 지난주 토요일에 방송해드린 제이슨 드볼트와의 인터뷰 1편에서는요. 평범한 직장인이었던 제이슨이요. 테슬라 투자로 130억 원을 만들어 나가는 과정을 자세히 한번 들어봤습니다. 그리고 테슬라에 투자한 이유 도대체 테슬라의 어떤 면에서 그토록 커다란 투자의 가치를 발견했는지 함께 살펴봤고요. 세 번째로 오랜 투자 기간 동안요. 굉장히 많은 시련과 어려움이 있었을 텐데 그럴 때 테슬라 주식을 팔지 않고 지켜낼 수 있었던 비결을 들어봤습니다. 마지막으로요. 이제 테슬라에 투자를 시작하시는 분들을 위해서 이런 질문을 드려봤습니다. 테슬라를 지금부터 투자해도 괜찮을지 아직까지 테슬라의 주주가 되지 못하신 분들도 꽤 계시잖아요. 이런 분들이 지금부터라도 테슬라의 투자를 시작해도 괜찮을지 여기에 대한 제이슨의 의견을 함께 들어봤습니다. 여러분들을 위해서 살짝 말씀드리면요. 오늘 방송해드리는 2편이요. 1편보다는 2배는 훨씬 더 재미있고 감동적입니다. 하지만 지난주에 제이슨 인터뷰 1편을 놓치신 분들은요. 먼저 시청하시고 오늘의 방송 보시면 훨씬 더 재미있게 즐기실 수 있지 않을까 생각을 해봤습니다. 2021년 2월 9일 화요일 방송의 제목은요. 테슬라로 130억 대박 테슬라네요 단독 인터뷰 제2부입니다. 테슬라네요 파트 2 미준 오늘의 이야기는요. 첫 번째로 테슬라의 2025년 그리고 2030년 정도 되면 어느 정도의 주가를 우리가 기대해 볼수 있을지 제이슨의 의견을 한번 들어봤고요. 두 번째로 테슬라 주식을 과연 언제쯤 팔 계획인지 제이슨이 엑시 플랜을 가지고 있는지 한번 질문을 해봤습니다. 세 번째로 테슬라 외에 제이슨이 좋게 생각하는 기업이 있는지 과연 다른 기업에도 투자를 진행할 의지가 있는지 이 부분에 대한 질문을 한번 드려봤고요. 마지막으로 한국 투자자들을 위한 제이슨의 조언이 있었는데요. 이 조언을 함께 들어보도록 하겠습니다. 지난 방송과 마찬가지로요. 오늘 방송에서도 Catch Me If You Want는 생략하도록 하겠습니다. 이 부분은요. 제이슨 드볼트의 의견을 제 의견이 섞이지 않고 가감없이 전해드리고자 하는 저의 의도니까요. 이 부분 이해해 주시기 바랍니다. 여러분 오늘 방송 보시기 전에요. 구독, 좋아요, 그리고 알람 설정 꼭 부탁드립니다. 구독, 좋아요, 그리고 알람 설정은요. 우리 모두가 함께 부자가 되는 길입니다. 자 그러면 지금쯤 은퇴를 해서 멋진 생활을 즐기고 있을 제이슨의 두 번째 이야기 바로 시작합니다. Um, can you tell us um, um, uh, your opinion on the Tesla share price? What kind of Tesla price uh, are you expecting to see in about five years time from now? Um, yeah, so I'm really bad at predicting any kind of prices. I mean, I would say, like, I think that uh, five years, maybe, you know, I would hope like at least $4,000 a share in five yeah. years. Yeah. I would hope that um, at least, right? And then maybe in 10 years from now, you know, 10 to 20K a share. Um, and uh, it could be much higher too, right? We could see, you know, 30, 40K a share, $40,000 a share um, if Tesla just blows out of the water with full self-driving and, and they're able to more than 40X production output, for example, solar roof and, um, you know, the semi-truck, Uh, integration with Starlink and Boron Company. There's just so many opportunities ahead. It just, just it depends on how well they execute and if they execute, um, you know, if they just do really well with a lot of these new products and, and you know, executing mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. um, the production rollouts, then they can, they can definitely, you know, get up to 20K a share, I think, in 10 years. It's, it's possible, right? But I, I just think that 
I would be happy if there were at four thousand dollars a share, you know, in ten years from now. That would be, you know, good enough for me. But um, I think they're going to be much better, much better than that. So. Mm. And even with a four thousand uh, dollar per share, is more than four uh, x. Yeah, it's almost five x. Yeah, <laughs> okay. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah right. that'd be great. Okay, fantastic. What about uh, um, some risks? Um, when do you plan to sell uh, your Tesla stocks? Do you have any exit plans? What would be the sign of the risks that we have with the Tesla? Yeah, so I, I'm trying to avoid selling any of my Tesla shares ever. Um, and uh, that might sound a little crazy, but I can borrow against my shares at about 1.5% interest. Um, and hopefully at some point less than 1% interest, meaning you know, I can take, I can borrow a million dollars and, and pay $10,000 a year in, in interest, right? So, uh, or 15, uh, you know, so, so a small number, small amount of interest every year. So I can effectively borrow against my, my stock. And as long as the stock appreciates faster than that debt, I don't have mm-hmm. to pay back that, that loan ever. Um, and then when I pass on my assets after I die, uh, then that well, that debt will just be a portion of my my portfolio. So I'm just trying to avoid ever selling my shares, and just that's that's my goal, right? And uh, and when you to 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 use to use that approach, you kind of have to have a lot of assets, right? For most people, that might not work because they do want to you know upgrade their lifestyle. Um, but for me, you know, I would just love to be able to to just avoid selling any shares because I think that there is a huge amount of upside and, and, you know, I I would regret selling any shares. Talk to anybody who sold Tesla. It's, it's, (laughs) you know, anybody who sold Tesla shares. Um, Yeah. And I would like to reach nine figures at some point to, to reach a hundred million would be kind of, uh, you know, that would be awesome to be able to reach that. Ultimately I want to, um, you know, I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet, but I want to do something big with with my uh, with my shares, like with all of my assets. I would like to, you know, I don't know if I would start a business, but I definitely want to make a big impact, right? Um, I'm not a big time consumer. I'm not going to drive, um, you know, a Ferrari or a Lambo or buy a big mansion. Or, yeah, that's just not me. I'm, I'm I'm probably going to just hold on to my shares and mm. you know that yesterday we had a big news from amazon uh, jeff um, bezos is stepping down so uh, what about elon musk if, if elon musk makes some move like uh, jeff bezos are you going to uh, considering to sell i think right now elon is critical to the success of the company but in maybe five years or so um they uh once they maybe reach scale with their with the the new uh, smaller, you know, I guess Model Two car. Once they reach volume production with that, I think that um, Elon can step away, uh, and there'll be, you know, there's a lot of people underneath Elon that um, have been with the company for for many years, and and you know they could run the show with, without him. Uh, he'll still be engaged, of course, right? But I think that you know, I'd say 2025. Um, that's my prediction some, sometime mm-hmm. around then where he can safely you know, step away and it wouldn't be too much of a concern, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then Elon, it's like Elon, I mean, it's like with um, uh, Jeff Bezos, right? Jeff Bezos, he just stepped away from, from Amazon as a CEO and, and the, the guy who took his place, his name is Andy Jassy, um, mm-hmm. is like, uh, he's been at Amazon for like 23 years, I think. And he yeah. founded the uh, Amazon Web Services, which mm-hmm. was, you know, that's, you that's an incredible business, right? So yep. he's the man, but like, he's not really well known, I guess, outside of the cloud community, but within, within the AWS cloud, which I work on, he's like a rock star. Like he, he basically <laughs> founded the, you know, the cloud. I mean, he's been, you know, he scaled up AWS into one of the most profitable uh, businesses ever. Mm-hmm. And it's growing at 28% a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it makes up more, it makes up more than half of Amazon's profits, I think. Yes, um, yes. It's just an incredible business and he runs it, right? Uh, mm. Bezos doesn't really work. As far as I'm concerned, I think Bezos, and I'm speaking, all this is, you know, uh, my own personal opinion. It's not based on, I'm not speaking as an Amazon employee. I'm speaking more of my own. Uh, these mm-hmm. are my own ideas, but I think that uh, Jeff Bezos isn't really visible in the AWS community. Um, he's mm-hmm. really not, he's not a member of the AWS community, in my opinion. It's Andy uh-huh. Jesse is, is the top. So 
uh, like he's the he's always speaking at the AWS reInvent events, and um, everyone at AWS you know kind of reports to him. So uh, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. even all the even all the engineers, right? And Andy's kind of more of a sales guy, but all the engineers, everyone everyone rolls up to Andy. Um, mm -hmm. He's the he's the, the head honcho at AWS. Apart from Tesla. Yeah, I can see uh, you. You have uh, you. You speak highly of uh, uh, Amazon. But are there any uh, other companies you are currently investing in or paying your attention to? Um, yeah, I think that you know, like I said, if I wasn't investing in Tesla, Amazon would probably be number two. Um, and SpaceX, boring company, I think are the most exciting opportunities um, that I would invest in. Uh, and Starlink, Starlink, it, you know, is basically kind of. Part of SpaceX, I guess they uh, that that's something I actually my IPO. I would definitely invest in Starlink. Um, and uh, like I said, Neuralink is awesome, but it's I think it's very early right now. I, I don't I don't know what their their goals are for launching and actually creating a revenue generating product. Mm. Um, but I mean, Neuralink seems like an amazing opportunity as well at some point. Um, I think in general, like, you know, there's really no rush to find one of the next big investment. Everybody, I think after seeing the run-ups with Tesla and, um, you know, all these meme stocks, people have just, it's almost like a gold rush. Everyone's trying to find the next <laughs> big stock, right? Yes. Um, but, but, you know, like, like people had five years to buy Tesla, right? Between 2014 and 2019. It basically went nowhere, and you could say Tesla even went down twenty five percent between those two years in that five year period. If you just choose the right days, you know, say you choose the mm -hmm. high, highest day in two thousand fourteen, the lowest day in two thousand nineteen, um, it, it went down twenty five percent in five years. So it seemed like a terrible investment, but <laughs> but people had five years, so there's no rush, right? And um, Peter Lynch is one of my favorite investors. He talked about you know people had ten years to buy Walmart stock in the seventies. Before the, it went up, before it went up 500x, right? Uh -huh. 10 years, 10 years after IPO to buy Walmart before it went 500x. So it's, it's like people have time. I mean, and how long did people have to buy Amazon before it went, mm -hmm. went up like crazy and Apple and all these companies? There's a lot of time. Right? Uh, it's more important to just do research and, and be mm -hmm. looking out for good products. You also have your own experience, your own life experience. For me, it was just, you know, growing up with cars and seeing electric cars. So use your experience as well to make, to give yourself an edge over other investors or institutions who might not see the opportunities that you see. Um, mm. So those are some tidbits I would, pieces of advice. Uh, don't try to follow the herd. You know, don't, you know, an extreme example is getting in on the on GameStop, uh, GameStop, right? <laughs> Everyone's chasing that and then it crashes. So, yeah. you know, that's the last thing you want to do. So, um, you know, it, it, like if you find a great opportunity, buy the stock and just sit on it for at least seven years, um, you know? <laughs> Okay, absolutely. Thank you. Um, you just mentioned that you are interested in boring company and also SpaceX. You know, the, the ARK Invest is launching a new uh, ETF, uh, probably at the end of next month, uh, ARKX. Uh, will you be uh, investing in uh, that uh, ETF? It sounds awesome. I mean, I don't really own any ARK funds, but um, if, I, yeah, if I wasn't in Tesla and maybe Amazon, I would probably definitely, you know, ARK sounds... You know, it sounds like a great investment yeah. um, to park your money until you find that next big company. Like I said, there's no rush to find the next a Tesla. Um, you know, you could park your funds in ArcX for a while. And then at some point, you might find one of these opportunities. It could be like three, four years from now. Then you could go big on that. And um, I wouldn't go all in like I did. I didn't go all in originally. I had a diversified portfolio to begin with. I think that $18,500 investment I had in Tesla was something like 10 to 20% of my portfolio at the time. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go all in immediately. Um, mm -hmm. And, and uh, going all in is a personal choice. Like I, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't really recommend, I mean, I'm not a financial advisor. I wouldn't recommend anyone do that. Uh, but if they have strong enough conviction, I mean, and they're able to hold on to the stock um, no matter what, I mean, uh, well, maybe not no matter what, but if you're able to hold on to the stock and manage all the vol and handle all the volatility, then you can, you know, you can go all in. Thank you. Um, 
what is your plan for your retirement? Because you are retiring in about two days' time. Do you, now you have enough time, you have enough money. Um, do you have your own bucket list to follow? Um, so, yeah, I don't have a bucket list. Uh, I, I'm actually not like much of a box checker. Um, I think uh, you know, I find more satisfaction in, in learning uh, and building things. Um, so that, that's my thing. I just love to learn. I'm always learning and building stuff and doing little projects here and there and learning about new languages or new um, frameworks and you know, software stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably going to create a YouTube channel. And that's why I bought some of this equipment. It's, it's a little <laughs> bit. I'm going to create a YouTube channel and try that, see where it goes. Um, and then uh, I'm also really comfortable, really comfortable with uncertainty. So um, I, for example, when I left Google in 2015, I just decided to take a year off and figure out what to do next. Um, and, uh, and I had a really productive year learning uh, a new subfield within engineering called DevOps. And I, I just learned a ton of uh, skills during that time. Um, so that was, you know, a lot of people might stress out after leaving, leaving a high paying job like that and not having any plans, right? Not knowing what to do. So then I'm gonna do something similar with retirement where I'll just dive into something and see where it takes me. Um, but I'm not gonna be sitting back and um, trying to be as comfortable as possible, you know, traveling and seeing the world. I'm not kind of, not really that person. Um, but, uh, you know, I do, at the end of the day, I, I wanna help people, um, you know, both now and retirement, building something, sharing it, uh, whether it be like, information or building an actual um building something that people can use that's amazing uh jason i i'm quite impressed to hear that, that you have a um, plan for learning um plan for uh, uh starting youtube channels uh, uh plan to help other people because you know when people have a 12 million uh, in your hand the first thing they think about is lying on the beach, <laughs> um, stepping on the cruise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can only, you can only do that stuff for like so many days, right? Like how many, like how many times can you lie on the beach before getting sunburned or <laughs> like going on a beach cruise before, or going on a cruise, you know, you can eat a lot of food on those buffets on the, on the cruise ships, right? Mm -hmm. So like, it's, it's not, when you really think it through, you can't do that stuff for that long. You know, you have to have a life of meaning, you know, you have to have a life that is where you're actually creating something and, um, we're living in a really crazy time right now. There's a lot of uh, massive disruption in you know our economy and governments, and you know it, there's a lot of a lot of our institutions are falling apart, um, like healthcare, universities, financial system, you know, government agencies. There's a lot of um, a lot of these institutions are being disruptive disrupted by innovative companies that are coming out with new ways of doing things. So. Um, yeah, I think that uh, there's, there'll be a lot of decentralization um, and there continues to be, you know, decentralization with finance and education. Um, you know, so I think, and even just moving away from cities, people are kind of, with COVID, you know, there's this kind of, there's this mass movement away from, uh, from just everyone being confined in one city. People are kind of being more spread out. And I think there's a lot of, a lot more decentralization across many areas. Um, it's kind of an interesting time to, to, to be living right now. Uh, a lot of change. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I mean, I, I, I haven't spent much time with you, but I can see that uh, you, you have a very healthy and a sound mind. Maybe uh, that the kind of, uh, you know, the healthy um, way of thinking is uh, helping you to uh, be successful with your investment, with a healthy style of uh, investment. <laughs> Ah, yeah, talking about the YouTube channel, can I ask what kind of uh, um, uh, topics or subject on your channel? Yeah, so um, I tweeted uh, my followers asking them what I should create content on. So I need to review that tweet and see what people said. Uh, uh -huh. So um, I would like to focus on kind of effective ways of thinking, uh, you know, helping people become more independent thinkers because... Um, for some people, it comes natural. Like I think I'm a natural, independent thinker. I think very uh, first principles and long-term and exponential systems thinker. Like those things kind of come more natural to me for some reason. But a lot of people, um, for a lot of people, it doesn't. And just kind of helping people think think that way, and also recommending the right books they can read. For me, some of these things do come kind of come naturally. But I did read a lot of books in all these areas, so. 
Um, that's helped me think very differently about investing and seeing Tesla as a great opportunity. Um, and uh, so I think I'll probably uh, try to do that. And also, you know, to see what, what users want, you know, read the comments on all my videos and, and kind of follow that. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds fantastic. I, I think when you have uh, your channel launched, please uh, contact me. You have my contact details. So uh, maybe we can uh, invite you back again. I'm um, talking about, yeah. not, not about Tesla, talking about your own channel. Uh, that will be fantastic. Cool. <laughs> Great. Um, Jason, I think the, it's time to uh, wrap it up. So uh, before we close today's session, are there any other advices or comments you would like to share with uh, the Korean investors? Sure. Um, so don't let anybody tell you what to do with your money. You know, you, you work for your money. It's, it's yours. Um, and uh, there are a lot of people out there that really don't care about getting you, getting your money to work for you, right? Uh, there are a lot of financial advisors and things like that. Some of them are good, but some of them are just, you know, they're not going to help you. Um, they're more concerned about, you know, kind of covering their asses um, mm -hmm. and, and not losing your money than actually taking a risk and getting you a decent return. Mm -hmm. um, so, so uh, I think that just, uh, yeah, don't let anyone take it, you know, tell you what to do with your money. Also look into Peter Lynch. Uh, Peter Lynch is a great, uh, you know, he's, he's an, uh, an incredible kind of um, uh, fund manager or he, he managed some uh, um, mutual funds and, I think index funds in like the eighties with uh, Fidelity and just a really famous investor, Peter Lynch um, wrote a book called one up on wall street. He also has a bunch of YouTube videos um, and it's all about long-term buy, buy and hold investing. So definitely uh, take a look at Peter Lynch. Um, and I think for younger people focus more on earning money through work by acquiring skills um, and rather than spending too much time day trading or trying to spend, you know, trying to invest, trying to put your money into work for you, because you have to build up a certain amount of money to be able to have a good foundation um, to be able to uh, to earn with investing, right? If you start with $100, maybe if you trade options or something like that, you can convert that into $10 million, um, mm -hmm. but it's unlikely, right? I think that's better for people to, to focus on acquiring skills and getting, uh, getting a decent job. Uh, and then once you get that income stream coming in, then you can start investing. Mm -hmm. I didn't start investing seriously until I was like my mid twenties, uh, actually kind of maybe like 25, 27. Um, so um, I think just focus on your, on your earnings first and then build up, you know, your earnings are a stepping stone to investment income. For, focus on your labor income uh, mm -hmm. and then just maximize that income stream. And then, then the investment income comes later. Um, and uh, also, I, I'd suggest getting into something for future jobs, you know, getting into software, learning how to write some code definitely doesn't hurt since software is kind of one of the few ways you can apply leverage uh, for a business. It makes you more valuable as an employee. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, software is kind of eating the world. You know, it's, it's really taking over a lot of industries. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, so that's, you know, I think that, um, and just understand why you're investing in the first place and, and to realize that the only way to really build wealth is to invest. You can't really build wealth just by earning mm -hmm. uh, a large income. And you can only earn when you're actually working, which is, you know, 40 hours a week. You can't really earn when you're retiring uh, or when you're retired or when you're sleeping. And, and it's a very mm -hmm. small number of hours of your lifetime where you can actually earn money through work. But if That's you right. own investments, you know, they, they grow um, even when you're sleeping. Right. So when you're on vacation or retiring. So, you know, that that's why people should invest. I mean, you don't really need to make a lot of money um, in your job uh, throughout your career to, to be able to retire with a lot of money if you just invest wisely. So. Um, Excellent. Yeah, excellent message. Uh, the, we really appreciate your uh, fantastic uh, insights. I guess that's it for today. So um, it was uh, great to have you with us today, Jason. Um, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your wonderful story with us and your wonderful insights as well. I hope you will have a fantastic retirement and enjoy the rest of your um, uh, journey. Uh, please let us know when you start your own YouTube channel so that uh, we can uh, invite you back. Cool. 
Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. It's, it's fun. Pleasure. It was great. Um, thank you, yeah. and uh, please just stay healthy and uh, awesome. All the best. Cool. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hey.